Dr. Geethe, sir, he is waiting for us. Uh, sir, your presentation is visible. You are audible. Please go ahead, sir. Amit, sir, please unmute uh, Geethe, sir. Yes, sir. He is co-host. He can just unmute. Just he will have to click on the audio side button. Yes, he has yes. already unmuted, sir. Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, good, okay. Good morning to all of you, uh, all doctors from veterinary uh, colleges, and uh, I must thanks to uh, this organizer for uh, inviting me and to share my knowledge with you. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, this organizer uh, has suggested me to talk on uh, some theory parts first, and then uh, you know just uh, uh, talk on uh, how to use the ESPSS software in a uh, research. Uh, so I have divided my uh, this lecture schedule uh, in uh, two parts. So first, um, 40 45 minutes, I will talk on uh, uh, this uh, choosing appropriate statistical test. Because you know, in any research process, um, uh, it is uh, the, most of the researchers find very difficult uh, to choose appropriate uh, statistical test for appropriate uh, data. Uh, actually, <coughs> you know, this uh, any uh, research uh, research uh, process uh, begins with a uh, your objectives. See, sir, please, uh, sir, please make it in slide form, sir. Uh, slide show, slide show. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Is okay now? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, any research process begins with a uh, generally with a preparing a. Uh, sorry, objective of research question uh, of the study. You know, in any data analysis, uh, mainly we require only two things. Uh, number one thing is a uh, uh, number of individuals and uh, characteristics of that individuals. There's two things we require uh, for any data analysis. Uh, now here I have used word uh, as a number of individuals. Uh, because this uh, meaning of this word is a uh, uh, very general. Because see, <clears throat> number of now you all are belongs to the uh, veterinary science, so uh, you are belongs to the animal. So here individual uh, maybe animals here. Uh, if some participant here are from agriculture, so their um, individual maybe a plants. Uh, if any uh, other sub. Uh, participant from any other uh, uh, the zoology or uh, the, some other uh, sociology, sociology. Uh, uh, so in a, uh, if you are doing a research on a sociology, then uh, their individual may be a person. This. So here is a, your individual is a, related to um, uh, your <coughs> animals. So see, is a, uh, in data analysis, we require two things. This is the number of individual and characteristics of that individuals. Number of individuals, uh, if you take an animal, so animal, this characteristics of animal, whether this uh, animal is a um, cow or buffalo or some uh, gear guy or some something, this, these are the characteristics of uh, that individual. So generally, and uh, when you put it our data uh, in the Excel sheet or uh, in any sheet, so we put it in a data in a matrix form. So there is a uh, rows contains number of individuals and column contains number of uh, variables here. So here uh, in a data analysis, this is a we require this is a uh, minimum requirement of data analysis for this only. Number of individuals means uh, in a veterinary science you require number of animals or uh, characteristics of that animals. Now any any after after framing. Because any research process begins with a uh, framing a research question of the study. Now, after framing the research question of the study, our next step is to we go to the frame our questionnaire to collect the information from the subject of respondents. This is now 
uh, when you are uh, we have to look uh, very carefully at the uh, research question and uh, we have to keep uh, in mind that what kind of questions you have framed and uh, keeping in mind what question is framed only you have to include only those questions uh, which are related to your research questions this is suppose for example uh, if your research question is a, um, is there any association between uh, pet lovers and uh, uh, type of family type of family means nuclear family and uh, joint family here so your question should be related only this so pet lover means yes or no pet lover uh, or the uh, if you are an, or other is a whether family is a joint or nuclear so your question should be related to your research question uh, that is uh, very important see generally uh, when you are framing any questionnaire as you know this uh, when you are framing any questionnaire so generally you will find two types of questions while preparing the questionnaire for survey any survey so there are two types of this closed ended questionnaire and open ended questionnaire this questionnaire is generally this classified into two groups close or open ended questionnaire that you know close ended questionnaire allow to limited number of choices that you know for example if you take an uh, this is a if you ask question to what is the gender of the uh, respondent so um, uh, this gender may be a female female and transgender these are the responses you know this limited number of responses would come so that is a, that is a close ended questionnaire like educational qualification ssc hsc ug pg these are the now religion hindu muslim sikh these these are the types of the close ended questionnaire and advantage of close ended questionnaire are greater it gives greater precision this is and <coughs> uh, this and uh, the choices may be uh, you know this is a yes no male female or may in all in this is a uh, for example examples of uh, close ended questionnaire see open ended questionnaire we use when you don't know the what responses would come from the respondent so at this uh, in this situation we uh, ask question to the respondent in a uh, different manners so this is this is a uh, type of questions this is a close ended question and uh, this is a uh, example of close ended questionnaire what is educational qualification because these are the uh, responses that you know um, uh, only uh, educational qualification is ssc hsc undergraduate post graduate or a phd you can include also now apart from this you would not get any uh, uh, responses so see this questionnaire is called as a closed ended questionnaire this is an open ended questionnaire it is necessary to use open ended questionnaire when you when we can we cannot guess all the possible responses would come from the um, respondent so in this situation we uh, we use uh, open ended questionnaire actually Um, this open-ended questionnaire, open-ended questionnaire. Also, again, we convert into closed-ended questionnaire. And we have to write four. This is now. See, this is open-ended. Uh, this is a uh, how to um, ask uh, question through open-ended question. This is a what are the major sources of stress in your life at this moment. so if you have such kinds of question because the stresses is a um, uh, uh, different types of uh, stresses uh, are there so this um, uh, this uh, respondent will um, uh, write here uh, their responses so you just uh, collect similar similar types of responses and uh, you just code uh, you give uh, you give to the name uh, to the similar type of responses and then code to them so again the open ended questionnaire we uh, try to convert into closed ended questionnaire and then we use for the uh, data analysis this is so generally in every in any uh, survey question in any survey questionnaire we find these two types of questions closed ended and open ended question so see here uh, <clears throat> there are two type now as you know there are two types of question when these types of question can be treat as a level of measurement in statistics so when you look at this question closed ended questionnaire and open ended questionnaire so when you look at the statistical point of view so 
we measure this questionnaire on some measurement of scale in statistics level of measurement classified into four categories number one category this is a nominal level ordinal level interval and ratio so this level <coughs> see when you when you look at the questionnaire is a questionnaire generally we include gender of the respondent then uh, what is educational qualification of the respondent what is the um, uh, that is a um, uh, religion of the respondent so when you look at the this questionnaire this questionnaire measured on some uh, scale this is so please please mute mute your is a some participants are disturbing please please take care so see uh, actually uh, in a statistics uh, this questionnaire uh, see when you look at the disclose ended and open ended uh, the uh, type of questionnaire so um, uh, in a uh, stat statistical point of view we measure uh, this question on some scale of measurements means level of measurements and that level of measurements is classified into four categories so in the hierarchy this interval and ratio scale uh, in upper and then ordinal and nominal scale so you will find because nominal and ordinal scale these are categorical of data because you know this is gender of the respondent male female this is these are the categories uh, this is the categorical data and uh, educational qualification this ordinal type of data so uh, it is very important see you will you will find this four level of measurement while preparing any questionnaire while preparing any questionnaire See this level of measurement is request so to participate. Why this level of measurement is so important? See this level of measurement help us to choose appropriate statistical test. Because in general, because uh, we have to uh, start with a uh, right from the <coughs> begin with a uh, this a type of questions and this type of questions. close ended because uh, when you are framing any question so we put it this questions only but when you look at the statistical point of view so this uh, these questions are measured on some scale of measurement level of measurement we can say and these level of measurements plays very very important role to choose appropriate statistical test for a appropriate data because all the statistical tests are developed on the basis of is four level of measurements so what kinds of level of measurement you are um, you have uh, you are in number 48 30 32 30 for 20 21 20, like this this data is given in a number so this now if such kinds of data then which kinds of test is a uh, useful for this data so that is if you have categorical data if you have um, like a male female Uh, or uh, other um, uh, educational qualification hsc hsc ug pg so here what kinds of statistical uh, test is uh, appropriate for your data so uh, so this level of measurements plays very important role uh, to choose um, uh, appropriate statistical test for a uh, appropriate data now case question is that how to identify this measurement that is very important uh, role because you should know so which kinds of scale you have in in your question research question and uh, what kinds of state should be uh, useful for your data set so i am just trying to how to distinguish this measurement four major on scale so once you know how to distinguish this uh, level of measurement scale then accordingly you can choose uh, your uh, appropriate statistical test for uh, appropriate uh, data uh, appropriate data <coughs> so uh here first this is a first is a uh, see this is a level of uh, measurement scale first is interval scale and uh, ratio scale 
So what actually is this uh, interval and ratio scale? So interval and ratio scales are quantitative measures. These are, and these generally gives in the numbers. Like uh, this, for example, I have given temperature, age, height. So generally we uh, get data in a uh, numbers, height, you know, weight, blood pressure, sugar level. These are continuous type data. This is continuous data means what? A variable X, which can take any value in an interval. This is an interval. See, define interval and ratio. Generally, we collect data in the numbers and then we convert into uh, these um, uh, categories. So interval data means 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, like this. So define interval and ratio data as a quantitative data type. And that we groups variable into and rank categories using continuous data. Because this temperature is only uh, difference between both types of numerical continuous, both types of scales are numerical continuous data. So our interval data lacks true zero. If you, if you differentiate interval scale and ratio scale, so interval data lacks true zero, whereas ratio data does not, because ratio data has absolute zero, contains absolute zero, and in a interval data, arbitrary zero. Like, a, for example, temperature. Temperature, temperature is an example of a interval. Interval scale, uh, this is because, uh, you know, temperature, uh, we don't get the exact temperature. We say the zero temperature, but actually there is no zero, zero temperature. There may be uh, some uh, nearest zero, but we, we uh, take as a uh, zero temperature. So this is, this is not a true zero in a temperature. But age, we take a age old, uh, uh, age is a zero age. Uh, these are the example of a ratio scale. But, uh, but in a statistics, uh, both scales uh, consider as a, this is a continuous scale uh, and it gives a numerical data. So uh, this is not a uh, issue of this. See, now second scale is a, this is a level of measurement is a ordinal scale. See, in the hierarchy, interval and ratio scale is in higher, um, in, a, in, in the rank of hierarchy, uh, interval and uh, ratio scale, it gives uh, more information, more information from the data. And uh, uh, actually, this, uh, how do we distinguish this uh, nominal scale and ordinal scale? See, a variable having uh, categories with natural order is called as a ordinal variable. Because a variable having categories with natural order, for example, I have written here, this is a, what is educational qualification? Because here is a natural order there. So when you read this uh, educational qualification variable, this is SCSC, SCSC, UZ, undergraduate and postgraduate. So these automatically, somebody is disturbing, please. Somebody is disturbing. Please, uh, Request to participant, please, please mute. mute. All are disturbed. Uh, shall I, sir, may I request you, uh, Amit sir, to mute all and. Ah, you mute all, better way. That is. And then uh, give this. Mute, mute all. All muted, sir. Yes, sir. You have muted me also. So, see, now what is educational, now here, educational qualification. So when you look at this educational qualification uh, variable, so when you read this variable, so you will find there is a natural order is there because <coughs> SSC is a less than HSC, then undergraduate and postgraduate. So this, there is a natural order. That's why we call it as a, this is a ordinal variable. Now, how response is medical treatment, excellent, good, fair, poor, political philosophy, liberal, moderate. Because here is, we, we feel inside this is, there is a uh, natural order is there. Because one is the uh, inferior and other, other is the uh, superior, we um, feel in our mind. So that's why it is defined as a variable having categories with uh, natural order. So natural order is there is called as the ordinal variable. So uh, for example, also you can, when you prick the, um, uh, this is a, 
pin or uh, pin to the body so um, so we realize there is a moderate pain or severe pain this is also a, there, there is a natural order is there so uh, that is also called as a ordinal scale so here and um, uh, next next is a nominal a variable having categories without natural order is called as a nominal variable now without natural order when you read the variable so you will not um, uh, find in your mind this a uh, uh, there is a natural order so so when you read this variable for example what is your gender so male female transgender so you will not find there this is a male is inferior and female is a superior this so there is a no natural order here now what is your religion this is a hindu muslim buddhist christian here also we don't find any um, natural order in a religion uh, we don't uh, discriminate between hindu muslim buddhist and christian this is, there is a no hierarchy so uh, these are the uh, nominal variable married unmarried divorce widowed so here is a, also uh, there is no natural order we find naturally so that's why it's variable called as a nominal but when you compare this because nominal uh, scale and ordinal scale both are uh, categorical scales and um, uh, nominal scale it gives less information and ordinal scale gives uh, more information than uh, nominal scale uh, also uh, we can uh, uh, take another example um, if i ask question to you do you smoke so your answer uh, would be either uh, yes or no it is a nominal scale yes or no but when i ask uh, if you are interested in to collect more information from the respondent so we ask them to how much cigarette you smoke in a day or in a week this so one cigarette two cigarette three cigarette so this, this is a, there is a natural order is there so that scale is a ordinal scale so why this scale of measurement is very important in a uh, this a uh, statistics because see you take a, any statistical test any statistical model this all uh, statistical model all statistical test are developed on the basis of these level of measurements so what kinds of data you have and accordingly uh, this um, uh, already this test are available in statistics this test are available in statistics but you should know what kinds of data you have whether a data is a uh, uh, data is a measured on which scale if data is a measured on a, a continuous scale then which statistics is important if data is a measured on a, a categorical uh, on a nominal scale or ordinal scale then uh, what kinds of um, appropriate test is uh, uh, available uh, in a uh, statistics literature so th that is a very very important see in a statistics your uh, test will not be changed only domain knowledge will be changed now you are uh, related to uh, you, are, you all belongs to the veterinary science only your domain knowledge will be changed there but statistical test will not be changed this level level of measurement scale of measurement will not be changed so Uh, in a um, uh, veterinary science you can take so is a milk production so milk production in a um, liter this that is a continuous scale so if you have such kinds of variable and if you are going to um, different uh, um, taking difference between gear guy and uh, or um, a hybrid um, uh, breed and uh, desi breed so uh, so in this way so what kind of test is uh, appropriate here uh, so that is very important because these level of measurements in statistics plays very very important role to choose appropriate test for a appropriate data that's why first uh, before uh, choosing this appropriate test for appropriate data you should have a basic knowledge of this level of measurements what kinds of level of measurement you have in data set so uh, that is very uh, important this is now see when you are choosing the decision making process how to this is a how to choose this appropriate test for appropriate so this is a decision making process is if you go on through uh, some steps so you will find this so in choosing the uh, appropriate statistical technique so you will need to consider 
some number of different factors. So these include consideration of type of questions you wish to address. Type of question means what kind of research question um, you want to address. For example, if your research question is uh, uh, this, uh, 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 is there any association between pet lovers and um, uh, uh, income? Pet lovers and income or uh, pet lovers and educational qualification. Is there any association between? Uh, paid lovers and um, uh, educational qualifications. So here, what what type of questions you have asked? So here is a two variable because paid lover you will um, uh, measure on a, a nominal scale. Uh, paid lover yes or no, paid lover. And your educational qualification is a SSC. If your uh, educational qualification is increasing, so uh, really are you attaching with a uh, paid or not? So uh, if if you have such kinds of research question. So you have to find out what type of atoms or uh, on, on which scale uh, that variable is uh, used. Because here is a, in a research question, in this research question, there are uh, two uh, variables are there. One is a paid lover and other is a educational qualification. So paid lover is a yes or no. So this is a major on a nominal scale. And this educational qualification is a major on an ordinal scale. This is. So now here is a, if such kinds of question is here. So what kind of um, appropriate statistical test is a uh, appropriate for for this uh, data, uh, such kinds of data. So nature of the data you have available for each of your variable, uh, and the assumption that must must be made for uh, each of the different statistical techniques. So see, when you're using some, uh, here is a parametric and non-parametric technique are there. So parametric techniques are depends upon some assumptions. So we have to look at really these assumptions are satisfied or not. Uh, if these assumptions are satisfied, then you use a parametric test. If assumptions are not satisfied, then you go for the non-parametric test. So that is very, very important here. Following step make decision about the appropriate uh, statistical technique. So this is a decision making process. See, so if you go through these five steps, is more important to choose the appropriate test for a appropriate data. See, following steps will help you to make decision about to choose appropriate statistical technique. Now, first, first we have to look at what question do you want to address. Means. For example, I have, is, a, is there any association between paid lover and educational qualification or paid lover and uh, other, um, um, you can uh, say, um, uh, marital status, whether married, unmarried, widowed, separated, that is there any relationship between paid lover and uh, this marital status? If you have such kinds of, first, uh, we have to look at the what questions do you want to address? This is. Now, once you... Uh, and the questionnaire atoms. Now, questionnaire atoms and scale that you will use to address question. Now, here is a paid lower is a this this is a nominal scale uh, categorical type of questions, and it is measured on a nominal scale. And uh, educational qualification also a categorical variable, which is a uh, measured on a ordinal scale. Uh, <clears throat> so. Um, that is very important. You have to look at the what kind of questions you are asking in what in what scale uh, that variable is measured. This and the identify the nature of each of your variable. Nature of which is categorical, continuous. This nature of variable, uh, it is a very important. Now, uh, fourth step is a decide whether a parametric or non-parametric statistical technique is appropriate. Now decide whether parametrics, now parametric test are based on a normal theory, whether we have to check whether data is normally distributed or not, this, if this assumption and making the final decision, because here is a, uh, how to decide this uh, parametric or non-parametric uh, statistical technique is appropriate. So that uh, uh, here is a, I have tried to, uh, explain this is a parametric versus non parametric. Uh, here is a see parametric test when you're using parametric test, uh, it is a based on a normal population. Parent population should be normal, and uh, if it is a um, uh, not normal, parent population is not normal, then you go for the 
non parametric test this is in a parametric test you know this is a t test then pair sample t test these tests are uh, comes under this parametric test this is this is an example so now this assumption should satisfy now here is a parametric uh, assumption errors are independently distributed first assumption is errors are normally distributed error should have constant variance and here data are typically uh, measured on a ratio or interval scale this is you no know, continuous scale this is a data is measured on a continuous scale and um, uh, if these assumptions are satisfied independently distributed errors are normally distributed errors should have constant variance then you use this test this normal uh, j test uh, if um, j test we use when your sample size is a uh, large and uh, if sample size is small we use independent sample t test and this this kinds of and if these assumptions are not satisfied this assumptions are not satisfied uh, not normally distributed for example so you use non parametric test so for not non parametric test uh, no assumption is uh, uh, required there so see it is not uh, like this a uh, this a uh, non parametric test as very um, less powerful and parametric test are more powerful but um, uh, what kinds of data you have if data is not following normal distribution then in this case parametric test gives very very weak results so that uh, um, or very misguiding results uh, if your data is not following normal distribution so uh, non parametric test uh, is better than parametric test so there is no any discussion one is the powerful and another is definitely if data following normal distribution the parametric test are uh, more powerful Uh, this, but if you are not uh, following normal distribution, so you don't use uh, parametric test. You go for the uh, non-parametric test. Is is there? So in a <laughs> see now here is a this is a in a uh, statistics in a statistics. Uh, if you see uh, the statistical any the statistical techniques are divided into two parts only. Uh, when you look at the, uh, uh, for example, if you frame your questionnaire, uh, and uh, if questionnaire contains ten or twenty questions, so each and every questions would be variable. This is, and this each and every questions will be um, measured on some scale of measurement, which is an interval scale, ratio scale, uh, this continuous scale, uh, or uh, the um, uh, nominal ordinal uh, scale. This. and this uh, generally uh, uh, if you have 10 variable or 20 variable generally uh, um, we go a by we go step by step this is don't unmute me uh, see you go uh, step by step so uh, first um, we do univariate analysis in univariate analysis if your categorical data so you will find uh, how many uh, uh, males how many females how many buffaloes or how many uh, cows are there you will find if your categorical data is there uh, so you will get when you are doing univariate analysis if your age variable is there so you will find mean mode median standard deviation um, that kind of information uh, you will get uh, so univariate analysis then we go to the bivariate analysis in a bivariate analysis we check whether there is a, any relationship or not between two variables this is and uh, this is a bivariate analysis and then we go to the multivariate analysis because one variable is a depends upon so many variables so uh, that is a multivariate analysis in a statistic so um, uh, this is a Uh, techniques are divided into two parts so first is uh, exploring the relationship among the variable and exploring the difference between groups this is you will find only this uh, major statistical techniques are divided into uh, two parts uh, it, <clears throat> now uh, first we will see uh, what are the tests available for exploring the relationship among the variable and exploring the difference between the groups now here
when my this is like this ha huh, yes okay see now um, if you have such kinds of research question example of research question what is the association between paid lover and marital status if you have such kinds of research question now what kinds of uh, technique is a um, appropriate for this data set now if you are addressing such kinds of question what is association between paid lover and marital status so now um, problem is here that now what kind of information you require minimum require uh, information we require to fulfill this uh, uh, research question so uh, what do you need so here one categorical dependent variable you require and one categorical independent variable you require now here is a association between paid lover and marital status so here is a paid lover is measured on a nominal scale and another uh, categorical independent variable also measured on a uh, nominal scale this is a married and married widow and divorce this so this minimum uh, requirement uh, uh, require to fulfill your uh, this uh, research question now these two variables are required now what are the appropriate test to um, find out the inference uh, really is there any association between paid lover and marital status so here both variable are measured on a uh, nominal scale uh, dependent variable is measured on nominal scale and independent variable also measured on nominal scale and these are the categorical because and here is a this chi square test for independent is a appropriate test for this if your such kinds of data is available now see here chi square test it gives only whether there is a association or not between paid lover and marital status it doesn't give uh, information about the how much is the strain how much is the strain between this paid lover and marital status if you want to check how much is the strain then this chi coefficient and cramers we um, is a uh, appropriate this now phi coefficient is useful when you are 2 by 2 contingency table now 2 uh, by 2 uh, for example dependent variable is yes no and other independent variable also yes no so this uh, you will get 2 by 2 contingency table this is so here is a phi coefficient uh, if you have 2 by 2 contingency table phi coefficient is a uh, appropriate and if you have such kinds of with one variable is a uh, measured on uh, two levels and another variable is measured on a uh, more than two levels then cramers v is a uh, appropriate but this phi coefficient and cramers v this both test are both are it gives statistical uh, test and always strength of association between two attributes this is so uh, this chi now uh, we will discuss something on uh, this is chi square test so this are the chi square test for independence is uh, appropriate when both variable are measured on a nominal level of measurement nominal level of measurement this is now so here if you have such kinds of data available with you and your research question actually this um, test research question so if you have such kinds of research question uh, to find the answer for this research question you use um, chi square test now sometimes we can use some uh, chi square test for a uh, ordinal variable uh, income level uh, this is a ordinal uh, educational qualification is ordinal but uh, sometimes we ignore the order and we use uh, this uh, <coughs> chi square test uh, simply to use chi square test we want both the variable should be categorical type if you, your variable is not categorical we cannot use because if you have continuous data first continuous data we convert into categories like the 20 to 30 like this, and they use chi square test this is and chi square test is a non parametric test any assumption is not required here for a, but um, now condition for this here sample size should be large uh, we cannot use uh, chi square test when sample size is very small so if uh, sample size very small so there is a fisher test is available but a um, chi square test is useful when you have a, a large sample size 100 200 300 like this sample size if you have 
then this um, chi square test is useful. Now both variables should be assessed on a nominal scale. If if a variable are uh, assessed on a ordinal scale, you ignore the scale and you can use uh, this. Uh, all sales uh, should be independent. This is and when analyzing a two by two classification table, the no cell should display an expected frequency of less than five. And with larger, suppose M by N table is there, like a three by four table, then no more than twenty percent of the cell should be should have expected frequency less than five. So this is a um, uh, if you have, if if this um, uh, uh, minimum requirement is not meeting, so you cannot use uh, chi square test. If any cell is uh, contain zero values, also we cannot use uh, chi square test. That you uh, keep in your mind. This is this is the minimum requirement for uh, uh, this is very important. This is so if the observed frequency in any of the cell is zero or expected frequency in any of the cell is less than five, then Uh, chi square test is not recommended this is now uh, but most of the times so consider uh, gathering additional data or perhaps collapsing some similar types uh, order to increase cell frequencies when minimum this are not this may not you add some uh, adjacent cell uh, adjacent um, uh, cells uh, <coughs> and uh, we can uh, use Uh, this chi square test you you can collapse some adjacent cell or we can merge uh, these cells with other and you can use now see this chi square test of independence only provide test to test whether there is association between two categorical variable or not this is only association it does not give any information about the strength of association between two variables If your goal is to check strength of association, the test are appropriate. Now, five coefficient is appropriate when you have two by two contingency table. Kramer's V is appropriate for large cross tabulation, M by N, like a pet lover is measured to to uh, two variables and um, marital status is a uh, four levels are there. So, in this case, Kramer's V is appropriate. So phi and Kramer's V coefficient can be measured strength of association like a correlation. So it gives test also like um, uh, chi square. <coughs> it can be test also by phi and Kramer's V coefficient. If the value of the see now uh, uh, you know the, uh, this major this is a chi square is there. So it lies between zero and one. The range of the uh, chi square uh, or this a uh, phi and Kramer's V coefficient. The range is a zero and one. If the value of the near zero, then we can conclude that there is a weak strength between two categorical variables. And if approximate to one, then it indicates that there is a strong strength between two categorical variables. Generally, computed values of phi and Kramer's V measures lies between zero and one. So if uh, simply is this, if value is getting very nearest to zero, so it indicates that uh, there is a weak association between Two variables. For example, uh, we are taken this a pet lover and um, marital status. If your value is getting very nearest to zero, their um, uh, Kramer's V value, then uh, you can uh, conclude that there is weak association. If it is getting nearest to one, it is a um, strength. There is a strength in a association. Uh, association. This. Now see uh, this candles tau B. Uh, if you have, uh, both variables are measured when uh, ordinal scale see kendall stow b statistics is useful when both the variables are measured on ordinal scale this see here is a actually this is a methods uh, uh, statistical methods developed for ordinal scale uh, we cannot use uh, for a uh, nominal scale but methods are developed for a nominal scale uh, can be used so here is a uh, see candle stow b statistics is useful when both variables are measured on ordinal scale a variable having categories with natural order is called as an ordinal that you know if your aim is to check whether there is a association or not between educational qualification of son and educational qualification of father 
because both variables are aspect is also but ignoring the uh, their order we can use even though their order and use here is now here it provides strength and significance of the association between two variables now simply is this when we use when kendall's tau is appropriate when you have both variables measured on a ordinal scale then this kendall's tau is a uh, very important now see uh, exploring relationship among variables is now first is a uh, i have taken a research question example of research question is a is there any association between fat lover and uh, uh, your um, uh, marital status so both are categorical type variables so that's why we have used chi square test is appropriate there now uh, for example uh, if you have such kinds of question research question is there is there relationship between age in year and blood pressure now see these are both variable one is the age and blood pressure now here level of measurement is a change their level of measurement fat lover uh, that, that variable was measured on a nominal scale and here is a this age variable is a measuring on a continuous scale this is and blood pressure also measuring on a continuous scale means interval or ratio scale this is so if now here is a scale of measurement is changing if your scale of measurement is changing accordingly your test will be changed your statistical technique will be changed now what do you need minimum requirement so to continue variables age and blood pressure you know age we uh, 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 from 20 year age 30 40 50 like this 35 this is this given in a number blood pressure also systolic blood pressure diastolic uh, uh, blood pressure so this uh, blood pressure uh, both blood pressure we measured in a number this is so now here is a scale of measurement is changing so here now here we are not using chi square test now here chi square test is not appropriate here. now which test is appropriate here so here is a correlation is appropriate so correlation is a pearson product correlation this is so simple correlation coefficient is a appropriate when both the variables measured on a continuous scale then a simple correlation coefficient this is a pearson product moment correlation is a appropriate technique is here and you know the uh, it measures the nature and uh, strength between two variables the quantity nature means positive nature or negative nature of the data it gives and strength means how much is strength in a uh, both variable in age and blood pressure generally you know this age is increasing blood pressure is increasing both are increasing uh, is a both age is a directly proportional to the blood pressure sometimes both are increasing simultaneously so here <coughs> the sign of r you know the nature of the association this is nature of association means negative nature or positive nature if there is a positive nature means positive values if you are getting so both are increasing simultaneously if age is increasing blood pressure is increasing if there is a negative sign is there r value sign is negative one is the increasing other is the decreasing it indicates this so while the value of r denotes the strength of association also so strength of association this is a generally it is lies between minus 1 to uh, plus 1 this is if it is a nearest to minus 1 then it is a negative association or negative relationship or if it is nearest to positive this is a positive um, uh, relationship between the variable this is now uh, here is a um, uh, this value of the range between minus 1 and plus 1 the value of r denotes the strength of now here is a this pictorial this uh, diagram is uh, shown so how to measure this uh, direct um, So, if if value is nearest to zero, means there is a weak uh, relationship. So, if value is nearest to minus zero point, is intermediate, and if the nearest to minus one is strong, if nearest to minus zero point two five is weak association, like this, uh, in, in between minus zero point two to zero, weak association between minus zero point zero seven five to zero point. to five the intermediate association and so this is a direct indirect association and direct association if value is a positive then direct association and if uh, value is negative is indirect 
association and if a zero uh, if getting there is a no uh, relationship between uh, two variables so technically uh, you will not get zero uh, there <coughs> And the uh, um, correlation between uh, x and y equal to zero, but uh, conversely, it is not true. Uh, instead, it is mutually uh, because when uh, zero, so we uh, we call as a both variable are independent variables. But <coughs> generally, uh, when you uh, take sample from the population and when you calculate the uh, R values, so you will not get uh, exact zero. So you will get something 0.12 like this. It's a, um, but this there is a. It indicates that there is a uh, no relationship. So it's a range is uh, same. Uh, if r equal to zero, it's a, see if zero to uh, if r equal to zero, this means no association or correlation between the two variables. If lies between r is lies between zero to uh, 0.25 weak correlation. If 0.25 to 0.75 intermediate correlation, 0.75 to one strong correlation, and if R equal to one perfect correlation. Accordingly, you can take uh, minus uh, also. See this is Spearman ring cor uh, rank correlation. So when do you use Spearman rank correlation? See, uh, it is a non-parametric measure of uh, correlation. See, this a Pearson product correlation technique is a very sensitive for outliers. Outliers means what? Outliers means uh, so some values are very far from the uh, rest of the values. This is one values is very far from the uh, rest of the values. So the, the, this is outlier. If if your data contains suppose uh, uh, we have taken uh, age and blood pressure. If age and in blood pressure has a more outliers, for, for example. So in this case, uh, you will not find perfect correlation between two variables. So here, so here is a, uh, because data is a continuous. So in this case, we rank the data. We rank the data. And when you ranking the data, so automatically this outlier effects will be eliminated. This. So this and this is a non-parametric measure of uh, correlation. This process procedure makes use of the two sets of ranks that may be assigned to the sample values. So when when do we use Spearman rank correlation? When oh, so many outliers present in your when you are using a Pearson mode of correlation, and if you observe that uh, there are more outlier contains in your uh, data set, then you avoid. Pearson product of correlation technique uh, because you will get a, a very uh, poor results. In this case, if you have such kinds of, if your data is contaminated, if data is a contaminated like this, if outlier contains your data means data is a contamin contaminated. So in this case, we rank the data. We rank the data. Uh, we first, um, uh, if you have an observation, uh, then we, um, write down the observation uh, in ascending order and then we uh, rank this observation and when you rank the observation so automatically your outlier effects will be eliminated so here and then you use Spe uh, spearman rank correlation coefficient could be computed in the following cases this is both variable are quantitative means you can use but when when there is a outlier present or if both variables are uh, qualitative ordinal variable also, we can use Spearman uh, rank correlation. If one variable is a quantitative and the other variable is a ordinal, in this case also we can use uh, the Spearman uh, rank correlation. So generally, <clears throat> you keep in your mind when to use uh, the when to use uh, the Spearman rank correlation and um, uh, Pearson product correlation. That is very very uh, important it's to understand this. Uh, two techniques. Uh, for example, if you have such kinds of question is there, example of research question uh, is this, uh, to identify the risk factor of blood pressure. If you have such, such, such kinds of question is this. Now either blood pressure is um, uh, measured on a continuous scale. And uh, what do we need is to fill this uh, research question. Uh, 
so what uh, require minimum requirement is this one continuous dependent variable is required and two or more uh, continuous independent variables like a uh, you know this is a blood pressure is a uh, depends upon age stress level sugar level their body mass index then obesity like this your um, uh, this uh, so many variables this is a blood pressure is a uh, so um, if your aim is to um, uh, find out the which are the risk factors of this blood pressure so now now which technique is a uh, appropriate here so here is a multiple linear regression is a appropriate you know literally this uh, meaning of regression is to uh, go back to the past if outcome is here uh, so you, you know uh, if somebody uh, in our friend circle or in your um, colleagues uh, or in in a in our family uh, if somebody is a suffer from blood pressure so we try to correlate uh, some past experiences with the uh, with his um, history because outcome is here because he or she is a suffered from blood pressure then we try to establish the past relationships whether what he or she was doing in the daily life what was the age if age is a uh, um, more then is there a relationship with the blood pressure or not is there any stress level sugar is suffered from diabetes or not what was the body mass in it? we try to establish this so regression is the means this is a go back to the past so simple so here is a but your if your dependent variable see here is a what dependent variable and independent variable so dependent if your dependent variable is measured on a continuous scale only well now here we, you can take um, uh, milk production cows milk production if your dependent variable is a milk production so milk production is a depends upon so many variables this if you are if your variable is a if you are uh, doing research in agriculture so crop yield crop yield generally we uh, um, uh, collect in a numbers this is crop yield uh, so crop yield is depends upon uh, so many factors irrigation facility their um, uh, uh, ph level of soil and law, so many factors this is so th that can be uh, if if you search kinds of data then a uh, multiple linear regression is useful here this is very important now uh, second if you uh, see i am just a uh, uh, changing a re research question and objective if your research question or objective is changing your technique is changing because all the statistical model all the statistical techniques are developed on the basis of this level of measurement so this four types of this level of measurement is very very important to here finding the uh, some another research question example of research question is like this to so study the risk factor of coronary heart disease coronary heart disease cld now coronary heart disease now we cannot measure in a number so you will ask could ask the respondent there's a uh, whether you are suffered from uh, coronary heart disease or not here yeah, their answer would be yes or no here yeah. now this now here dependent variable is measured on a nominal scale so here is a dependent variable is a categorical here whether coronary heart disease is present or absent here is a, now in a multiple linear regression we have used why multiple linear regression is used because their dependent variable is a continuous type that's why their multiple linear regression is appropriate now here is a one dependent variable is a and uh, their um, uh, independent variables are a sugar level and independent variables are same this is because coronary heart disease we are just uh, these are the guessing variables a sugar level smoking alcohol bmi index uh, these are the guessing variables we don't know still um, whether there is a relationship or not between uh, this uh, coronary heart disease but after applying this proper appropriate technique then uh, only then you, you will get uh, which variables are uh, um, significant with a coronary heart disease so here multiple linear regression is not appropriate here. then which model is appropriate here here is a binary logistic regression model is appropriate because here your level of measurement is a changing your dependent variables 
major is changing because here dependent variable is a categorical type so here we cannot use multiple linear regression you use here binary logistic uh, regression model is appropriate here now see what we have seen this all the test this is a exploring the relationship among the variables exploring the relationship among the variables see when you frame the questionnaire so if you have taken 10 variables and if your research question is because uh, when you frame the research question your questionnaire should be related to your objective or research question that is because uh, <coughs> we have to put only those question which are related to your uh, if you have the, keep more questions then uh, this respondent will be irritated and uh, you will not get proper information from the respond so uh, very uh, clear or concrete manner this is a uh, what kinds of research question is uh, framed and what kinds of uh, information required uh, to fulfill our uh, research question that is a uh, very important so this is and accordingly you choose uh, appropriate statistical test and um, find your uh, conclusion this is now what we have seen uh, these all the uh, bivariate if you if you are uh, um, uh, taking the bivariate relationship then if both variables are measured on categorical variable then chi square test is appropriate if both variable are measured on a continuous scale then correlation is appropriate if uh, while using a correlation pairs one product correlation if there is a more outlier contains in your data set then you go for the spearman rank correlation um, so and um, these are the bivariate uh, relationship and uh, these are multiple linear regression and binary logistic regression these models are given for multivariate multivariate uh, data analysis this is because um, blood pressure is a uh, depends upon so many factors uh, coronary heart disease is depends upon so many factors so this is a um, bivariate and multivariate relationship this is so exploring the if you want to exploring the relationship among the variables so these these approach statistical techniques are available uh, in a statistics now if you are uh, so um, broadly this statistical techniques are divided into two parts exploring the relationship among the variable and exploring the difference between the groups now here is a um, suppose um, gender of the respondent male female now here is a we check whether there is a difference or not between male and female whether a difference or not between cow's milk and uh, buffalo's milk this is if you want to if if you have such kinds of research question again your test will be changed this is now explore the rela uh, explore the difference between groups now if you have such kinds of research question example of research question is given or objective so study the significant difference in the final weight of broiler chicken of diet plan so broiler chicken of diet plan is a corn generally we feed corn and wheat if you have given corn to the 10 animal and if you have given to the uh, broiler chicken uh, then uh, what would be the is there any change in weight is there any significance difference or not between uh, this uh, corn uh, diet and wheat diet is there any <coughs> So here, what kinds of minimum information we require to fulfill this research question? So here we require one categorical independent variable with two category one. This is a corn and wheat. We if we feed this corn to the ten chicken and wheat to the ten chicken, this is, and then you uh, try to um, find out after six weeks or eight weeks so how much is weight is gained. and uh, but this is a uh, given in number so if you want to test this is there any significance difference or not between this uh, two diets plan uh, is there is in weight so uh, and one continuous dependent variable means final weight of chicken if you have such kinds of variable so here is a independent sample t test is a required see now here is a sample is a small and here is a return if assumptions are valid because these are the parametric test the parametric test are depends upon these assumptions what are the assumptions these three assumptions are given errors are independently distributed errors are normally distributed and error should have 
constant variance. If these assumptions are satisfied, this independent sample t test is appropriate because independent why? Because here is a um, different uh, chickens are allotted to uh, different diet. Ten chickens allotted to uh, corn and ten chicken allotted to wheat. This is we, uh, we, so. <laughs> Uh, this they, here is a different population area here. There are independent samples are here. That's why this is a uh, now if if this now if this assumption is not valid, for example, uh, uh, one suggestion here is I have written before go to the non-parametric test. You try for a transformation. Sometimes what happen when you are using uh, due to the some uh, some body. Uh, uh, changes the chicken some sometimes uh, some broiler chickens weight uh, will be very large this is large means this is a one chicken's weight is very large means uh, that chicken is a uh, outlier this is so in this case uh, your data uh, not following uh, normal distribution this is if <coughs> so in this case, uh, you try to try for a transformation first you before go to the non parametric test you try for the transformation because there are two uh, outliers are there suspected outliers and extreme outliers are there uh, if is a, a suspected outlier is when you transform the data and after a transformation you again check whether uh, follows um, normal distribution or not uh, then you go for the independent sample t test if it is following normal distribution. Uh, after transformation, if data is not following normal distribution, then you last step you take uh, go for the non-parametric test. And uh, what is a non-parametric test available? This is appropriate non-parametric test is a Mann-Whitney test. If data is not following normal distribution after transformation, but generally. Of um, in a I have, I have this parametric test um, corresponding non parametric test man with need test we use but um, uh, I, I I would say uh, before go to the non parametric you try for a transformation if if after transformation if data following normal distribution then you use independent sample t test. Uh, otherwise, you go for the Man Whitney uh, test. This is uh, see, this is a independent sample t test. This is a formula is this x1 bar minus x2 bar is standard error of difference. So, this is a formula that uh, you know, this is a if t is now. See, if you have an uh, example of research question, is a uh, like this. Here is a now uh, does two weeks of training of the farmers for increase in milk production. Does two weeks of training to the farmers uh, for increase in milk production. Uh, is there a change in a milk production level after uh, training to the farmers. So before and after change in a milk production. If you have to check this now, here is a what here is a sample is a same area. If you have taken 10 cows and uh, sorry, if you have taken 10 farmers and uh, um, and their cows, so you, you check how much is a uh, uh, milk production is a change after uh, giving them some training. So uh, <laughs> now I don't know what kinds of training you provide, but uh, um, generally. Uh, we try for a, if you train uh, some farmers, um, then definitely your milk production, uh, cows or buffaloes production will be uh, changed. Uh, <clears throat> so if you have such kinds of um, research, if you are um, carrying, uh, then here is a, because the same population you are using our before training and after training, the samples are same. So in this case, you use a paired sample t test is appropriate here. Not the independent sample details. So one categorical uh, actually uh, 
and after um, one continuous uh, dependent variable milk production in a liter this is now here is a this is a repeated measure but you have to check assumptions this um, independently distributed normally distributed and constant variance and uh, if this data is not following normal distribution after transformation so you go for the wilcoxon sine rank test this alternative test is parametric test is a wilcoxon sine rank test is a uh, given here now uh, if your research question is like uh, example such questions in the biology can of different diet plan now here is a see in, in the samples we have taken only two diets corn and wheat there now here we have increased corn wheat rye and oats if you have four diets now we same uh, thing tomato uh, broil chicken now uh, now here your level of measurement of diet plan is uh, increase uh, in independent sample t test we have taken only corn and wheat now here is a corn wheat rye and there is a one way anova is appropriate here now one way anova is when is a useful when categorical independent variable with three or more groups if there is only two groups then independent sample t test is appropriate now when you increasing diet so uh, test will be changed we cannot use independent sample t test there you use anova and one continuous dependent variable final weight of chicken so here is a which appropriate test is a if your such kinds of research question is there so then one way anova uh, is appropriate but if assumptions are valid assumptions are or is errors are normally distributed Error should have constant variance if these assumptions are valid. But when generally, you know, in a um, uh, veterinary sciences, we don't take a large sample uh, because we conduct a small small sample studies in a lab. Uh, so uh, it is a sample size. So here is a there is a uh, ANOVA important. Um, so, appropriate parameter. This is a very, very. So, what kind of information uh, is a minimum uh, requirement for a your objective? Uh, one categorical independent variable, one continuous dependent variable, but categorical variable should be measured on 